Elizabeth Gurney was born here at Gurney Court on Magland Street in 1780. She was the third child of Joseph and Catherine Gurney. Her father was a wealthy cloth manufacturer. Both were very strong in their Quaker beliefs, attending services at the Goat Lane Friends Meeting House. Convinced that girls should be educated as well as boys, the family were taught history, geography, French and Latin. Catherine also told her girls Bible stories and read to them from the Psalms. She visited and helped the sick and poor in the district, taking her daughters with her. This was the basis for Elizabeth's development as a compassionate and caring young woman. As she grew from her teenage years into her twenties, her changing views did begin to set her apart from her family, but her faith and prayer were a great source of strength, and she found it easier to be practical and to make great efforts to help others. She ran a Sunday school in the laundry of the family home at Earlham, teaching many of the children who were already working in Norwich factories to read and write. Elizabeth, in her teenage years, set up what became known as Betsy's Imps. Her family had always called her Betsy all her life. So these were the children of estate workers, of the servants, of gypsies living on the land around, and she gave them a basic grounding in reading and writing. She would, of course, use the Bible and suitable works as her text um, because it was the, the Quaker ideology of equality. Nobody should be denied the right to read and write. In the summer of 1799, she met the wealthy tea, coffee and spice merchant Joseph Fry and a year later married him, moving to London. The first of their children, Catherine, was born the following year. She had a further 11 over a 20-year period, and despite constant childbearing and the demands of a large family, Elizabeth was progressively more active in the work of the Society of Friends. There was growing respect for her spoken ministry, and she travelled to other Quaker meetings to speak. In 1816, another Quaker, the French aristocrat Stéphane Grelet, introduced her to Newgate Prison in London. Shocked by the appalling conditions for the women and children, Elizabeth set about improving the situation. Warm clothes for the babies, clean straw to lie on, comfort for ill prisoners. She set up a committee of 12 women, mainly Quakers, with the intention of setting up a school for the children of the prisoners. Materials were purchased so that the prisoners could make and sew and knit goods for sale, and the money was used to buy clothing and food and straw for bedding. In 1818, she gave evidence to a House of Commons committee on London prisons, the first woman to do so. She described in detail the lives of the prisoners, the need for women, not men, but women to look after women prisoners, and her belief in the importance of useful employment. She proposed important changes in the treatment of prisoners sentenced to transportation to the colonies. Elizabeth set up district visiting societies to work with the poor, provide libraries for coast guards, and in 1840, a training school for nurses. Her programme inspired one Florence Nightingale, who took a team of Fry's nurses to assist wounded soldiers in the Crimean War. Her work for reform of the prisoners' conditions became exceedingly well known throughout Britain and across Europe. Right up until her death at the age of 65, Elizabeth continued to work in prisons and lobby parliament. She travelled further afield with her ministry for the Quakers, including many occasions at the Goat Lane Meeting House in Norwich. So what is the legacy of Elizabeth Fry? Well, obviously we see her every day on our five pound note. Perhaps Sue can best sum up the legacy of this extraordinary woman. I think she's a great beacon for women. She was a woman of great strength. She, everything she did, she did well and thoroughly. 